Hello. I didn't do a lot of advertising for this one. I didn't get a little crazy. Usually I do a little more advertising. I kind of get into it. I think what I'm going to start to try to do is do like a, uh, start to do Wednesday 3 o'clock as like my schedule and start hitting it that way. And then people will know to show up and hang out. Uh, I got paper towels in the background. Little Empire stuff going on. I'm actually in the Little Empire Studios. This is where it happens. Got a laser cutter over here. Got uh, everything I need going on. And I don't know if a lot of people are going to tune into this one. So, Petzl Roy, you and me, buddy. You and me. Uh, let me know. Rabbit Hutch, hello. Welcome. Let me know if the sound of the air conditioner is too much or if it's taking over or anything. I would appreciate that. Again, this is kind of a quick one. We're just going to do some basic drawing. I'm going to try to start to stick to a weekly schedule of uh, coming in. Oh, you can see the uh, camera up here. That's actually the camera that's going to be shooting the paper down here. I tried to get it out of view, but sorry, y'all. Hello to the camera. It's actually a phone. It's a phone with a cord. You can see this cord. Uh, you're getting all, all, the backs, all the backstage secrets right now. I also have a tablet going on over here on the side. So if I'm looking down, going crazy, that's I'm looking at the tablet and the chat a little bit. And then I have my full human face and a nice button-down shirt, which I found randomly in the closet. Don't even know whose it is. All right, it's mine. Just wanted to make it interesting. Uh, there's also some sunshine going to come in, so that's real sunlight in the studio right now, in the Little Empire studio where things get made. Uh, so it's been about two minutes in. We're looking good here. Uh, so let's switch over to our pay-per-view. You'll see I did a couple little doodles just to get started. I'm having a hard time getting my focus going on this camera. I think what I need to do is I need to pick up an actual, um, hello, Pexaroy. What I need to do is pick up an actual webcam instead of using my phone all the time. I have a little more control over the focus and the white balance and the depth and everything. And you know, there's, with these sorts of things, there's always a hundred more things to do. Let's see, everybody take a drink of your water. And if you have a hot beverage going, I got coffee here in my Bob Ross mug. Look at that little guy. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Good old Bob. It's fun you can see the, uh, see the inside of the coffee and the outside of the coffee at the same time. See some just quick sketches. I was just doodling a little bit so that uh, I could see if everything's in frame. Today we're going to be doing just some random items, but let's uh, start by, first of all, welcome. Hello. Glad you're here. Remember, you can draw, drink water, don't stress. I think you're cool. I'm happy you're here. Why do I think you're cool? Why do I think you're cool? Well, one, you're here. That's great. Two, uh, learning, I think, is cool. Learning and being open to learning, thats I think that's cool. Practicing something so you could get better at it, I think that's cool. Having human thoughts and being kind to other people, I think that's cool. So if you hit check any of those boxes, cool. Glad you're here. Okay, my door is locked, but my grandmother said she might drop by and see what I'm doing. So if I hear a knock, I might go unlock it, and she might come in, and you meet my grandmother. We'll see. That's that's a random event that may happen. Random events happen. You've got to be prepared for those in life, my friends. Yeah, good. Rabbit Hutch, I'm happy you're here, too. Good. Real good. All right, uh, I'm going to just start some practicing some shapes and lines so we can get into this thing. Again, like uh, some of the great things to do. When you're going into practice is work on some straight lines. You're just going to work on making those parallel to each other. 
Good. If you right now are not drawing, that's okay. If you're just hanging out watching, cool. Thank you. I mean, you could be watching Wheel of Fortune right now if you, if you like, have recorded it. Uh, my guess is you could always be watching an episode of Wheel of Fortune. I almost saw some lady win a million dollars the other day. Crazy cool. Check out these lines. I'm just working on parallel lines that are evenly spaced. Again, I'm sorry for the camera being a little bit blurry. I'm working on the whole setup. I'm going to have to work on the lighting and the distance and all that good stuff. So just working on some parallel lines. I'm going to go a little closer and go a little longer. Pretty much I'm going the length of my wrist, my draw of my wrist, down and coming in and coming down. A lot of times I'm pretty tight on my pencil the way I hold it. Kind of got it cranked in there and sometimes I'll even get a little divot on my, uh, on my finger back here from doing a lot of drawing. What you can do sometimes is you can loosen up. You can just loosen up and have a very loose free hand, just two finger and thumb holding it, very light, and then use your pinky to set. That also gives you a little more wrist motion. So I'm just going to loosen up a little bit. Sometimes, look at that, my line's a little, little jankier because of that. So I'm going to go back to my tight grip, and you can see with the tight grip, I have a little more control over my line. It's just the way it is. Also, uh, what you'll need is a pencil, a pencil, pencil sharpener sometimes, yeah, that's the real deal. That's good stuff. Uh, an eraser, I recommend uh, these sort of uh, polymer erasers, they work really well. There we go. And then a couple pens. I got these Microns from Michaels. They work out really well. Pick my Microns. Great. All right, just doing some parallel lines, nice and easy, close together. And then I'm going to start to space them a little bit apart. So they're starting to space out, getting farther apart, but trying to keep parallel. Again, I'm just going to the length of my, my draw right here. My draw is in, I'm, I'm pulling down, I'm drawing something, drawing it out like drawing steel or something. Also, you can see it's slightly starting to curve a little bit as it goes because of just how my wrist and arm work. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate, oh, I'm going to try to go uh, just straight across this way with it. Parallel lines going this way. Again, what I'm doing here is just working on my line, working on drawing a straight line, control of the pencil, spacing them out a little bit. Looking good. And then uh, I'm going to come back in and start to fill this in with just a little bit of pattern here. I'm going to do some uh, hatch, hash marks. My hand might be in the way for some of it. I'm just doing three at a time. There's a four. Just filling in some area. Happy lines, right? They're just happy lines. I don't know. There's maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, uh, twenty-four, thirty-six. Thirty-six happy lines living in harmony right here. I, I hope I hope they're living their best life right now. You can see I'm just filling in. You see how you see them? There we go. A little more in focus there. Again, I'm working on getting this camera just right so things stay in focus better. I'm gonna have to pick up a webcam at some point because the phone cam just doesn't do it. There's not enough fine control. It's close, but it's not not the best. Just filling in those with some hash marks, making them look nice there. And I can also maybe adjust my lighting some, pull back a little bit on that guy there. And then uh, if this book was up just a little bit higher, nope, too bright. Looking good. Good enough for now. Like, I need reading glasses right now, so those lines might be perfectly, they might be perfectly not blurry. That's what I'm saying. My guess is they are. 
filling in some patterns nice and easy. Just like before when we worked with patterns like this, the tighter you make it is different than if you make it wide and big. It's going to be a slightly different feel to the pattern, a little looser right there. Got that? I'm going to uh, touch this camera top. Hopefully it'll focus down a little bit. Too much. Too much. A little better, but still not the best. So much learning to be done and everything. Like, this is a lot of learning for me. I'm not only, like, you're learning to draw a little bit and hanging out. I'm learning to set up a drawing type situation. Mm. Come on. Come on, phone. Come on, get it together. Just stay there. Don't mess up anymore, phone. You just live your best life. I'm looking at the screen. How focused is that? Not crazy focused. All right. Got some patterns. Got some lines. Those are looking good. Happy little lines. Today, we're going to be drawing some treasure. Just treasure. Like uh, we drew a chest, we drew a landscape, kind of a top-down landscape with trees. We drew a bugbear, we drew a beholder. And those monsters usually have a treasure chest, which we drew. And then um, I'm going to use the old Dungeon Master's Handbook. And on these charts in here, you have charts. And uh, these charts, you roll the dice on them. You roll some dice, happy dice. Uh, and it kind of gives you a random item. And so I'm going to roll a couple random items and then sketch them out and draw them. Just so you can see, I'm, I, I plan to do that, but I didn't plan what those items are. So that's going to be kind of fun. I might choose some. I'm going to roll and then see how it looks. Um, again, some, for some practice, circles within circles are always good. Just so you're working on controlling that line. I go from the top and around, and then I try to go from the opposite direction. See, it's a little off here, a little wider on the bottom. So this next round over here, I'm going to try to make a little better. Sometimes you can go quick. Sometimes it's better to go a little slow if you're watching your hand the whole time. A little sketchy there, like little sketchy marks. That'll be cleaned up a little bit if I come back with a pen afterwards. Clean up those lines. Circles. I'm going to do some fast circles now. I'm going to layer them up. So I'm going to start with one circle. I'm going to kind of do some layered circles here. Now, this is going to lead to treasure eventually. Imagine a whole bunch of coins sitting on top of each other. And what I'm doing is I go out, just like we did with the trees, as I go out... I'm really going down as well. So if we have a pile of things, they're piled up on top of each other. And we all have seen how piles work. You pile stuff up and as you go out, you go down a little bit. Out and down. That's how a pile looks. So this is the top one here. This corresponds to this one up here. We're just doing some light circles. All right. Now another cool thing about um, light circles. See, that's looking pretty good up there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get something to put this book on because that's looking much better, much better. So I just need like a little box to put this on or something. Looking around, looking around in the studio. Happy lines.
Okay, hold on, real quick. All right, that's a little better there, huh? It get what what that does is it zooms it in, so I have a little less real estate to work with, but uh, it does bring the focus in a little bit better. And this is why getting an actual professional webcam might be the thing to do here. All right. We got circles, we got lines. Everybody's pretty happy with that. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Circles, lines. Again, talking about the depth of things things stacked up on top of each other. Boom, 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 boom. Just checking out how everything looks. Beautiful lines. Then I got this real estate up here. Remember this one. This is a good one to practice. Have you been practicing your uh, fill? You might not use it as much today, but that three-line fill, I hope you've been practicing that a little bit, really comes in handy. That's a good fill. Hash mark fill action there. All right. Uh, also, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna flip my book around here. So I'm just flipping it. Boo boo boo. So I have the other half of the notebook to draw on. Right. Look at that. I filled up the whole screen with the notebook. Have a sip of your sip. Water with emergency. Can't really go wrong with that. Uh, say we made a, say we found a chainmail shirt, right? There's like uh, the same so sort of little circle thing really fills out a chainmail pattern. If you can do little little circles and have them slightly overlap each other. You start to get this feel of like a chainmail shirt. Here's here's how I draw t-shirts. Like if I'm doing uh, work for a t-shirt or something, I'll do a rectangle, square. That's the basic body of the shirt. Do a little neck line, and then I drop some shoulders down and extend those arms out. Can extend the bottom shirt down a little bit, but then that gives us a basic shirt pattern from a box and then uh, what you can do is with those little circles you start to fill in those little circles all of a sudden you have a chainmail shirt look at that Bilbo Baggins would be happy with this shirt he wore a chainmail shirt it was I think it was uh, even better than chain it was like mithril it was the serious stuff made by elves those little circles, look at that, it's starting to look like a chainmail shirt. I'm going to make the circles a little bigger just so it fills in some time here.
sometimes with uh, with drawing, like you, you'll almost want to be like, ah, just fill in. I don't want to deal with you. Just fill in. I want to. I just want you to do it. But it doesn't work like that. You have to actually do all the work. That focus really gets to me. I'm pretty serious about everything being perfect all the time. And when things aren't, it kind of, you know, makes me just a little bit crazy. So I apologize if I'm doing this a lot. I'm trying to refocus the camera. That's called perfectionism. And sometimes it's really nice because it helps me achieve what I want. And sometimes it just gets in the way of me achieving what I want. Nothing, no, nothing is perfect. Thank you, Rabbit Hodge. You try. You do your best. You do your best. For me, like I'm learning to let go of some of my perfectionism and just getting the job done. Because sometimes what I think needs to get perfect, other people are like, it was already pretty close to perfect two hours ago before you went down that rabbit hole and tried to make it perfect. So I'm like, okay. What I'm going to try to do and what I'm trying to do more and more is uh, take that time and don't worry about it being perfect. Get it done and put it out in the world. And then most of the time people are happy with it. And then later on if I want to make it more perfect or I have time to work on it, I can. But most of the time I've, I'm just moving on to the next project. These little circles I'm trying to overlap the right way so they kind of they're getting kind of messy down here, as you can see. What I really want is them to, like, overlap just right. And then the next one comes down in the middle. So you get that almost Celtic cross-looking circle of circles going on. And that really makes them look like they're connected together. So here we go, circles. Again, like I have to draw all these circles. There's no magic. I look at somebody's, I always enjoy looking at people's drawings and artwork and wondering how long it took them to do. I saw a ballpoint pen drawing. It was so beautifully, beautiful, intricate recently. And I was spending time just checking it out. And it, it was amazing. I got lost in it and I real like, I feel slightly defeated when I see something amazingly beautiful artistic wise just done with with a pen and a piece of paper I'm, I'm blown away and I can really enjoy it and I can I feel in even after you do some of these drawings you'll really have more of an appreciation for other people's artwork once you try to do it yourself some and see how long it takes them to do all those circles to do all that intricate work on a drawing I love that I love disappearing and things like that. Embrace being perfectly imperfect. Great. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, I'm coming back with a slightly darker line around this chainmail shirt. Uh, somebody's going to be happy to wear, wear that. Arrows are going to bounce right off of it. Bing, bing. Bing, bing. All right. We had some fun doing some warm-up stuff. Chainmail shirt. We got some lines. I want to flip a page here. Oh, what's that under there? Those are the little Empire phone holders. I found a box of them to hold up my piece of paper. Isn't that pleasant? It goes so quick. I enjoy hanging out with everybody, but it just goes so quick. Now, all right. We got two things here. I want to get to a random item to draw and just draw it up for you. But also the other thing I want to uh, show you for treasure. Uh, let's do two things. Let's do a pile of coins and let's do some gemstones. All right. So a pile of coins. Perfect. Pile of coins again. I'm going to start with like 
the top coin. I'm going to just do some light circles. And then just work my way out from there. Overlapping some of them. Overlapping some of these circles. Why you no like focus, camera? Too bright. And does that do it? No. Feel like it's kind of needed there. Don't get dizzy with all the camera movement, everybody. You don't, you won't believe this, but I was, I spent half an hour before we even got started trying to get this to work right. And I just, it was just not doing it. I was being rude, rather rude. See my disappointed face shake? Come on. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to buy a real actual webcam. I apologize for all the uh, back and forth right now. I will have you know, it's infuriating me. But I'm going to smile through it. Keep up the happy. Well, we're just going to let that go for now. I'm doing little circles here. You see my little circles going on. This is going to be a pile of gold overlapping some of these circles as we go. I'm going to throw a couple out here. Just like rocks sometimes like to sit in little piles. I'm going to throw out. Oh. I might have to do another drawing class again tomorrow just so I can redo this and try to get it fixed. Now I'm kicking myself for not ordering the webcam last week. A couple weeks ago this went so well, I wonder what happened. Who is in charge of my camera? La la la, la 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 la. The Phantom of the Opera is calling. Almost. All right, so we have some circles. It's a pile of, pile of treasure, pile of treasure. Water and pretzels, ready? Water and pretzels ready. Water and pretzels, good. That's a good combo. I'm gonna start start with the top coin and I'm just gonna do a circle of that. And then these bottom coins that are underneath, I have to, I can't do the complete circle. So what I have to do is when I draw them, 
they kind of go underneath so they're overlapped. You see how that looks overlapped at that point? So you're just finding the edges of those circles. And these coins were hand smithed. So they're not all perfectly circular. So what you're doing here is you're just looking at your circles you drew and you're just outlining up to the point where they would be underneath the other circles. Let's say this one's on top over here. And these other two are underneath. And this one's underneath both of those. There's a cool coin over here. This one's on top. This one's underneath. This one's underneath both of those. Now you can see the kind of the depth that is going on there with those coins. And I'm following my circles loosely at this point. They're there to give me an idea about it, but sometimes I'm starting to see some of my circles were too big or too small, so look, here's a whole coin almost we can see under there. Here's a whole coin. And that could be a pile of beans. Sure, sure it could be a pile of beans. But right now it's coins on the table. That's treasure. That's treasure. We can do, all right, here's some little lines we can do to make it look like they're shining a little bit. So if you had this on a map, it look, looks like it's going out a little bit. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Two little lines, a couple little lines here and there. Oh, look at that treasure. A lot of times on your maps and drawings, all it like just little pieces of spice like that. Usually in those little dots and stuff, usually work in like groups of two or three at most. You don't want to do like one, two, three, four. Honestly, that's not bad. Let's not be down on, on the groups of four, okay? That's pretty good. One, one of my better groups of four. All right, this was a, uh, a graphic one pen. Uh, I'm going to get that in frame there. Graphic one, which is a little thicker, you'll see. Now, what I also have here is uh, some smaller pens, like this Micron 08. And this is going to be tinier. You see, it's a little tinier right there. And what I can do with this coming in, where this coin is sitting on, sometimes when you're doing shading, you want to pick a light, a direction for the light source. Right now, the light is coming in this way, all right? Coming in down from the side. Light coming in that way. That is a light bulb. What I'm going to do is, the opposite side of where this light's coming in, I'm just going to add a couple little lines of shading here and there. Underneath that one coin, onto the other coins. And my shading's just going to be little lines. Over here on this side, where the light's hitting, I'm not going to do as many lines. These are just little little dashes, little lines. Now I'm on the ground doing some. A lot of times you will work with and figure out like what implies a line to you. It'll be different for everybody sometimes, but I'm starting to already see a little bit of shading going on. It has a little bit of an effect. These ones, even though they're in the, in the ray of the beam, I'm just throwing a little bit of shade around them here and there. But a little less. Remember, the farther apart your lines are, the more it looks like uh, there's less shading at that point. 
okay, I ask you, what is in this room with me? I mean, the other day I was a salamander, a huge moth, and I know I have some spiders. But the noise I just heard, a uh, big, huge spider? Maybe the spider wants to draw. Maybe it's going to join us. That's a little bit of treasure. You can see that's a little bit of treasure going on. Looks like a pile of gold or a pile of potatoes. Either way, your characters are going to be happy. Because if they've been in a dungeon for a while, they're going to want gold and food. I mean, that's that, those are always necessary, right? Gold and food, my friends. Isn't that what we all really need in life? Gold and food. All right, gemstones. I worked on a... Uh, it was called a crystal telescope recently and the end of it this is a drawing I didn't actually work on a real physical crystal telescope but hey who's to say if I will maybe I will uh, crystal telescope uh, gemstones are neat they're faceted and fascinating I'm just gonna do Think of a diamond mixed with a square, all right? A square with two pointy tips. That, that's kind of where I'm going to start this, all right? A square without the top and bottom, two pointy tips, right? You got that. A square without the top and bottom because those are actually pointy tips like that. If you want to, you can do a square and just add some triangles on top. But I'm trying to leave this open. This is the main facet of this gemstone. Treasure, my friends. Out from here, we're going to do a couple lines. Kind of coming out from the center, but they can have a little bit of angle to them, too. It's the fun part. Every gem is cut a little bit different. See, now it looks like some sort of amoeboid right now. Those are different flagellums. I'm just going quick, adding some lines there. All right, and now we're going to connect the other ends of those lines. Kind of give them some space, doesn't have to be perfect, connected. The idea is we're kind of tracing this larger piece here. There we go. That's a gemstone. You see the facets of it in a way, the sides. I'm going to connect these other ones. Connecting. So when working on this crystal telescope, I kept drawing them wrong. I couldn't get it. I didn't understand what the facets facets were. So I went and I looked up gemstones, real gemstones and drawings of gemstones online. And that helps so much, having a reference. Like at some point people draw completely from their mind, whatever they picture up there and put it on the paper. But sometimes you need to look at reality or somebody else's drawing. And it, even looking at somebody else's drawing, you're not stealing from them. You're seeing how they achieved something. You're seeing how they had made an effect, which is, which is an interesting way to look at it. You, you, even if you're looking at something directly and drawing it on your paper, even if you're tracing it some, like you're learning technique along the way. So it, it's okay. It's, I looked at those crystal drawings. I felt a little bit bad, like, oh, I'm cheating. But I'm not. I, I'm learning how to do it. I'm learning how to make it happen. Gemstone, right? Now here's a couple little things that we're going to do to make the gemstone kind of look like pop a little bit. One thing I want to do is I'm going to make a highlight. I'm going to pick a little area and make that my highlight area. I'm going to pick this corner up here. I'm still going to kind of use this 
these aren't to scale. If you found a gemstone this big next to a pile of coins, you're rich. You can retire from adventuring. You're done. These are these are. Imagine them being like this big inside here. All right, little guys. They're just little guys in here. But I drew them up bigger so that we could see them here. Little guys. They're just little guys. I want to pick a highlight. This little corner right here. All right, I'm gonna draw a circle around my highlight. And what that's gonna do, I'm even going to erase inside of this circle a little bit. When light hits a highlight, it usually blurs it out, you can't see it. So that's what we're gonna kinda of keep in mind with this little corner right here. That's where the highlight is. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna fill in some of these facet areas. Your main facet, this works with windows and other objects with light. Just a couple light lines. One, two. Boom, boom. It's going to kind of be on this main facet here. So I'm going to go one, two. Now the, ang the sides that are not being fully illuminated by that light source, the light is hitting this side that's the brightest. The darker sides, like this down here, will probably be our darkest side. I'm going to fill it in a little more with some hash lines. This side, it's a little brighter in my world right now, just the way I'm thinking. So it's going to have lines that are a little farther apart. Remember, we worked on some lines that were close together and, clo and farther apart. I'm gonna come back up here. I'm just changing the angle on them too. This side, even less lines, farther apart. And then these sides here, I'm going to go even less, just a couple lines. And this one, I'm not gonna go into that highlight circle. All right, that's kind of gemstoning. Now I'm gonna come in with my uh, graphic one pen. Graphic one. I'm gonna, sip of, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and a sip of water. Mm, coffee with a emergency water chaser. What am I thinking? Got a crazy mouth taste. You got a crazy mouth feel there. All right, all right, we're doing this. Thanks for hanging out in the shop with me. That's the fun part, that we're in the shop where I'm making laser cut stuff all week. Like, this is where it's done. Za, 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 za. Making stuff, having fun. Again, I'm going to try to go for Wednesday at 3 o'clock. It's my scheduled time to do this. Life is crazy right now. Things are up in the air. I'll try to be here Wednesday at 3. 3 o'clock seems to work out. Uh, I'm choosing 3 o'clock Eastern time because it also makes it noon out in Arizona where I have friends and fans and families who want to draw with me and hang out. So I'm trying to make a time that fits, you know, within wake up and after breakfast time for them out there as well as this time here. If it doesn't work for you, let me know. I'll we'll make this work for you. For you, my friends, who I think are cool. Coming back in with the pen. This highlight, I'm going to try not to put any lines in there right now. So I'm going to hit the edges. Sometimes you want to connect your edges. Sometimes you want to leave a little gap there. It just looks cool. Now, if I was really going for it, I would make each one of these lines very, uh, very straight because I feel that's how gemstones are. But you know what? I'm embracing the imperfection. What is it? What is it? What am I doing? I'm embracing being perfectly imperfect. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Boom. Some people I see when they draw with pens and they're doing their lines, there's a great, great guy. Again, two minute tabletop. I recommend checking out some of his videos. Just they, you know, they've spent hours and hours 
drawing these lines. They're so good with it. I love it. I love seeing artists do their stuff. Sometimes it is discouraging, for sure. Even doing some of these laser cut buildings in art, I'm working on laser cut stuff. There's, now that I'm doing it, <laughs> as my hat, my hat just wanted to give you a sup. Now that I'm doing some laser cut buildings, I'm seeing more and more people and I'm finding more and more artists who are doing laser cut stuff. I'm always inspired and I'm always a little disheartened because they do amazing stuff. But you know what? I, that, I can't let that stop me. There's always going to be people who are doing amazing things better than me. That's just the way of it. I, I have to embrace that. All right, now I'm going to come in. Uh, here's the last one again. I'm not going to go into the circle of my highlight right now. We'll see how that looks. Like It's kind of just where the light's hitting. We might do some ding-dings. Like I might already do a little ding-ding here. I'm afraid a little bit. Sometimes I'm afraid. I'm like, what's, what's going to be good? The highlight area. What is in this room with me? Like, are there bats in the attic? <laughs> Who snuck in here and put bats in my attic? Not a euphemism. Come on now. Hey, friend. Hello, friend. Hello. Welcome. I'm doing some drawing here. We got. We, I only got another like 10 minutes or so. So I try to draw for an hour. I think in the future we can go longer with this. We can make a two-hour class or something. I'll take a break in between. We can all take a break. Uh, but for right now, an hour every Wednesday is what I'm going for. All right. Now I'm going to get my... Uh, I'm going to get my smaller pen, my slightly thinner pen. Again, if you just have ballpoint pens around, that's fine. If you have a pencil and just want to go uh, harder on a pencil, like check this out. I'm just going to go and make these lines thicker here with this pencil, right? So that works too. Like you use the tools you have. Every time something is hitting the paper and you're drawing, it is beneficial to learning to draw. You might, you might just be learning to draw as a stress reliever, just to doodle, just to make your doodles better. Please, doodle away. I have, I have notebooks and notebooks filled with doodles because it, for me, that's a major stress reliever. It's Chris. Uh, right now, you're at work with my brother. Great, guys. Good. Hello. Good to see you. I'm drawing for you. Chris is the guy, uh, old, old Dirty CJ, Old Dirty, like, I, again, I need reading glasses. Uh, you're the one who, one of the ones who recommended me to do Twitch and check out Twitch. So here I am, drawing in the studio some Twitch. These are gemstones, pile of treasure, gemstones. Like we, might not, we might go a little longer today, just because, because I'm having fun, all right? You can check out, what I'll do is I'll end it and I'll be like, ended but then we might um we might draw one more i want to draw a random item from the treasure chest all right here's some here's some highlight here's some uh shading with a slightly thinner pen that thinner pen obviously makes thinner lines right and uh you might want to spin your notebook around when you're doing some of these I'm not spinning the notebook right here just because how it is on camera. What I'm doing is just drawing. Drawing some lines here. Maybe one day we'll have music in the background. I think we've had that in some other videos. I think I've had music. I think even in some of the YouTube videos I added in some music. But there are car copyright issues with music sometimes, and so I can't be playing music. These two. This is what's going to sell it. Gemstone. Gemstone. Oh, that's real nice, everybody. A few of you have sent in drawings. And I haven't put all of them up like I'm supposed to. Like, to put them up online, 
underneath the YouTube videos. I was supposed to put them up there. And let me tell you, it does stress me out. It's all like everything can stress you out. It doesn't stress me to the point where I'm like up at night crying, but I am up into to like three in the morning wondering if I should get up and, and do it. Like I, it doesn't let me sleep great at night. What else doesn't help me sleep great at night? Taking naps during the day, all right? Jesus. Here you are, Chris. Here you are. All right, that's a little bit of a gemstone. Yeah, right? Caught that, caught that. I'm gonna uh, come back in with my trusty eraser. And I'm going to erase some of these pencil lines, just a light touch. I'm not going too hard on the eraser. You might have to go over it twice. And sometimes I go the other direction with the eraser and just a light touch. Clean up that little gemstone right there. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, the shading lines, like you're going to make them to the level you want. I, I kind of made them to make it look like a facet. Make them so you can see the edges of the faceted gemstone. Like you might not even do some up here on this side. Or I might space them out thinner. I might use even a smaller, finer line when I'm doing those gemstones. But this is like the main face and you can see. The cool thing about gemstones is you can make them go however you want. Like gemstones are cool. Boom. There's some sort of gem. I mean, it looks kind of like a rock, but then you can uh, pop out here with some faceted edges like this. And you can just work those faceted edges. Like gemstones works with a lot of triangles. And you go back in there and uh, clean up some of those edges like this. Again, just kind of throwing it out there like drawing things like this. It takes me a few times to get something I like. Like this one, I'm like, ah, that's almost too many crazy edges on that one. But you can see the triangles and stuff are adding some depth to it and making... This is just real quick, just plain. Again, you might do a hundred of these until you find a gemstone you like. I was going for something more of like a standing stone here with a sheared edge. Just free forming, just free forming here. Meh, 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 meh. In there, it's close. Right, naps used to be like you could when you were a kid, you could nap and and then go to bed and be, and be and sleep. Now naps like, sometimes I need a nap. I'll be honest, I'm like, I, I got up weird. Things are, things are strange. I ate too much sugar, I need a nap. And then they mess you up at night. Sometimes I try not to, like I fight myself. I'm like, I'm not gonna nap. I'm flipping my notebook around, just spun it 360 here, setting it back down. Uh, so we have some more space here to draw one random item. So we might go a little bit into the 415 time, might be over an hour on this one. Again, if you need to go, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I really do. I know a lot of good people. And I, I, I'm, I'm happy for that. Uh, but now naps are just naps that get you. They'll sneak up on you. So I'm like, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to take a nap. But what I am going to do is... I'm going to lay down in bed with a book. Like, I, come on, we know what's going to happen. We know. Like, if you want to read a book and not take a nap, you need to at least be sitting up. But if you're laying down reading a book, boom, nap. You just tricked yourself into a nap, my friends. All right, here, look, check this out. I have the Dungeon Master's Guide. Inside this guide are random tables. Random tables. Uh, so, do we want to do, do 
Would you like to go? I'll give you guys a choice. Whoever jumps in, we're going to either do an art object random table or a magic item object random table. Art item or a magic item. Object of art. Thanks, Rabbit Hodge. Art or magic? Shadows. Magic item it is. All right, here we go. There are one, two, three, four tables. I'm going to roll a four-sided die. Uh, the number is three because it's red on the bottom like that. That's a three. So table three over here looking good. And now uh, I'm going to roll a D100, which is two ten-sided die together. Now, am, am I going to draw exactly what comes up in this chart? Most likely. Unless it's, unless it's something we've already drawn or something, but I will attempt to draw whatever we roll here. Sorry. I wanted you to see it there. Uh, that's uh, 15. A 10, 10, 10 place, 5's place. 15, let's see. Adamantine armor. Armor, breastplate of armor. All right, let's see what we got. Let's do one real quick. I think I can do an armor breastplate. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah, I thought of it the other day. I was like, I just want there to be something random. And then uh, Gwendol the Gwendolyn Show slash Nicole suggested I do treasure. Because I had talked about that before, something I've done treasure chest, I've done some other items. She was like, well, what about treasure? I was like, great. But I wanted it to be random. I didn't want to know what I was going to be drawing. An armor breastplate. Like, already in my head, because oddly enough, I've drawn armor before. Uh, a breastplate. I've seen some. The Gwendolyn Show has a breastplate that she uses in her show. And uh, some of the distinguishing features of a breastplate to me, of armor, is there's the line down the middle, right, down the middle of the chest, and then there's uh, two shoulder holes, in a way, where you're sh where it's kind of cut out for shoulders. So just like we did that t-shirt earlier, what I'm going to do in a lot of drawing is you start with one basic shape, and then you cut, you cut and add to that, like, like almost a sculpt roll word I'm gonna have a sip of coffee for that one a breastplate is rectangular sitting on the body so I'm gonna uh, see the thing is right now I'm choosing in my head do I do it with a little bit of 3d dimensionality yeah sure why not all right. We'll just go with basic breastplate, though. All right, we're going to do kind of a square, all right? But it's going to be kind of smaller as it comes down. So we're going to do a rectangle, square sort of shape like this, all right? See this edge up here? This is where the neck is. Arms, bottom, all right? Again, I'm just going to do some basic shapes here. There's kind of, on the breastplate, there's kind of a skirting that comes out of the bottom part here, in, just in my view. Uh, so we're going to kind of come out a little bit. And we're going to give this a little bit of down. All right? You can see how that could start to fit around the body. There's some leather straps here. Now we're going to start cutting out in a way. And I'm just going to do three circles. And then we'll go from there. One, two, three. See how those overlap a little bit? Overlap that design? And in a way, I want to use that drawn circle to cut out from this other piece. So what I'm going to do now is come back over. All right, also, here's the line down the middle. Before I put that line down the middle, I'm going to just bring some point down here. A little bit below. A little triangle right there. A little triangle, okay? 
I'm going to point down the middle, a line down the middle. Adamantine breastplate. Adamantine super strong metal. I guess it's a real metal. I just don't think it's a fantasy world metal. I think it's a real metal. All right. I drew some of these lines here, some of these parts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in with the pen now. All right. Maybe we'll do one more magic item after this. It's four o'clock. Time's up. For those of you who need to go take your four o'clock nap, I salute you. Nap well. Don't wake up grumpy. Sometimes I wake up grumpy. Sometimes I let him sleep. That's a, that's a classic right there. We'll get that on a sign for you. Coming back in with my Graphic One pen, which is the pen I use for doing most of the outlines of things. It's a little thicker. And then I use a thinner pen as I go to the inside of things. And that gives a lot of dimensionality. You'll see a lot of drawings where the outlines are thicker, the inlines are thinner. It adds some depth to the drawing. Now I'm going to use these circles and these edges. Obviously, we're keeping these edges down here. So I'm going to start from this top of this circle. From the bottom of that circle, excuse me. Come out to do a little bit of this skirting. I'm going to give this a slight curve to it. Just a slight curve. We're making armor, my friends. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. We're going to pick a couple points where these intersect here. Guess we could come down with this a little bit. So I'm going to bring that one to fake this a little bit, even though I've drawn that dot there. Going to come down with some of these lines right here, all right? Now I'm going to come and follow this circle line inside. And, and I'm making this up a little bit as I go, but I have a feeling about where it's headed in my head a little bit. Skip that little part there just to give it a little interesting edge. Just implying there's a little bit of action there. Right? That, that looks like armor. That's pretty good. Uh, now we're going to add a little bit of uh, decoration to it. All right, here's an interesting thing. I didn't expect... This looks like back and front a little bit, right? This looks like it's in behind. This looks like it's in the front. That was an accident in a way because I wanted a scoop neck and then a point off of it too, but I'm going to kind of keep that. This, this looks like the back and front armor. Uh, I'm going to come back in with the pencil here and add just a little bit of design to it, a little bit of flourish to it. Like I'm picturing up from the bottom, like Florida Lee sort of stuff. Just a little design. Again, a lot of design just starts with some circles and lines. And then from this top, I'm going to kind of do a almost a scale looking stuff to make it like dragon scale armor. And we did this when we did... um. When we did the bugbear's fur and feathers a little bit. And again, this is just to add a little, little, you know, it's a magic item. Let's add some flavor to it. Nothing major. Some of these might be too much, but that's what we're going with. Uh, I just did some triangles down here at the bottom. Some lines on the side here. And then this armor top. Something like that. It's all made of metal, but it has a little bit of a little bit of action to it. Coming back in here with another uh, mic, I, micron light lines. I'm gonna add some shading to this back part. Good. 
Now some of these lines I'm just implying a little bit. Uh, what does this look like? Again, some of these lines are just here to to make it interesting. They're not functional in a way. <laughs> Great, thank you, Pexelroy. Thank you, man. Like, uh, again, I love watching artists who can. Right? Communication, like being an amazing artist is great. I I don't think I'm an amazing, amazing artist. I think I've gotten better in the, honestly, in the last few years. I've put some time into it. I've gotten better than I was. But what, sometimes amazing artists are not great communicators as well. So I'm trying to have that balance here a little bit. Uh, and Todd McFarlane, if anybody doesn't, go check out Spawn. Todd McFarlane, he was, he was one of the 90s best. I don't know how much he does these days. I'm sure he still stays busy with art. I'm just going to add some uh, buckle type situations up here where you would buckle armor on. I'm just going to add a little bit of shading to this side of things. So like the light's coming in this way this time. Light's coming in from there. So I can add just a little bit of light shading here and there. And then underneath a little bit. Again, the layering that is going on there. Layering, did I say that right? All right, imagine, it looks a little leathery, but imagine it's made out of metal. And uh, there's some adamantine armor. I'm erasing too soon here a little bit because I already smudged some of the ink. Uh, but there we go. That's an idea. Those circles are gone now. There's an armor breastplate. We rolled that. That was magic item. It, it's some uh, it's, uh, adamantine magical armor. And uh, it is uh, uh, worn by the uh, falcon. Uh, the falcon tribe. I don't know. You'll have to make up the story. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. 408, we'll go a little bit farther. Uh, good job, everybody. If we wanted to, we could add some circle back here a little bit. Maybe to make it feel like it's... Uh, eh, like you'd almost shade it in there in a way, but I think that's going too far. Again, I'm... I'm tweaking it too much at that point. Maybe I just let it go. But not not bad. I like that. The breastplate straight on top view. We could have done something a little more. Again, remember that was all that was all we started with a square. We started with a square. Right? That that's the fun part. We started with a square that was slightly tapered. That's all. That's where it began. All of that deep. You start with your basic shapes and you build from there. Even, like, I know Pexeroy does 3D art and stuff. Uh, you start with your basic shapes, your primitives, as they're called, and you build from there. And uh, that's how Todd McFarlane does his drawings too. Like all the great artists, you'll see pencil drawings. There's a head there, but you know, like, is that a head? Not really, right? Until you start to add in, like, there's some eyes, there's a nose area, you bring the jawline down, you add a hairline, there's an ear, like, the head comes back a little bit. Like, you start with these just basic shapes, and then you build up from there. This started with the rectangle, then we added a little bit of skirting underneath. Oop. We added some circles to do our cuts with. And then that gave us... some armor, right? Line down the middle. Great. 
Actually, let's get this vest made. I want to wear this. Let's get this done at new pterodactyl leather. I, I want this action going on right here. This will be my new uh, Lance Silverwolf costume happening there. All right. Last one for today. One more random magic item. I'm going to roll on the, uh, I'm just flipping the paper this time. Uh, there we have some chain mail, but just save some paper. I'm just, I can't do that. I can't have you, uh, all right. We're just doing it. We're saving paper today, all right? We're drawing on the other side. I'm going to roll again. Random magic item. Simple shapes into compound objects, exactly. So much of, I mean, so much of art, so much of life. Take the simple things, compound it until it's complicated, complex, and beautiful. All right, this is 80. Eights and zero. Eight and the ten, zero and the five. Eighty. Eight, zero. Looking at my Dungeon Master's Guide. The Shield of Missile Attraction. Okay, a shield. We can do this. Oh, hold on, hold on real quick. Let me check my book. A shield of missile attraction. So if you have this shield, if your character has this shield, see I'm trying to duck under my uh, the light from the camera. Gonna work this out. Give me, give me three, four more months. But I have it together. Shield of missile attraction. You have this shield. Arrows are coming in. Maybe some goblins are in the woods shooting arrows at you. You have your shield. I believe it attracts those arrows coming in. So they hit the shield and they miss your friends. They miss you. They're attracted to the shield with magic. Shields are cool. Uh, I am picturing in my head right now a shield shape, again, with some cut little marks here. A lot of times, uh, it might have been the Hoplites had their shield with a little edge cut in it so they could uh, set their spear within that little cutout part of their shield there. So we're going to do something similar to that warrior wise. See that? That's the warrior pose. Boop, boop, boop. Pardon me, I might sneeze. Pardon me. Good. Good. Again, I want to thank everybody for hanging out here. Last object, a little shield. Let's start with a basic shape, and then we'll cut away at it a little bit. Okay, you see me thinking. Let's start with a center line because I want to try to make two lines that are uh, coming off of it uh, that are symmetrical. So I'm just going to start with the center line of the shield. And then like the bottom of a heart almost, I'm going to come pull a curve here and a curve here trying to make them symmetrical. Like we're drawing, it's all right. It's not gonna always be symmetrical. Sometimes if you wanna make things symmetrical, what you can do is look at the top and you put a point here. And you put a point here, equal distance. You can even use your pencil sum to mark like equal distance or use something you have. And then you look in your head like uh, you'll do a line. Point point, they're equal distant, right? And we know we're coming to this point. So also you might want to put a point and a point, right? And then you can use those points to kind of guide you when you're making these equidistant lines. So they're rather symmetrical. I'm going a little quick here and I'm looking, I'm actually looking kind of at an angle, but that's the idea there, right? Using some dots along your way and then working within them. This one's close, all right. I'm just doing some uh, thicker sketch lines as I'm thinking about it and pulling it together. Uh, this top part of the shield is gonna be straight. And 
and then one side over here is going to have that groove cut in it. So again, I'm just drawing the circle to cut, to use that to cut. And now I'm just I'm thickening this up here to show you what I'm talking about. Boom. And then over here on this side of the shield, I'm just dropping it down. Okay. I'm going to erase, before we get to the pen even, I'm just going to erase some of this so I can uh, clean up in my head where I'm going with it a little bit. Like, I know I don't need some of these extra lines anymore. That one line was to get me the symmetrical. That was to cut. So now I can kind of see where I'm actually headed a little bit. I'm going to even get rid of those dots a little bit. There's my basic shield shape. Looking good. Uh, shield of missile attraction. Like, I picture two things. One, it has uh, in missile in role playing games usually means anything thrown. It doesn't mean like like a military level explosive missile. It means an arrow or a dart or a spear. Just so you know, like you don't want you don't want a shield that attracts nuclear bombs, all right? Hope I said that right. Two things I have in my head right now. One, some kind of symbol to say that's what the shield is. And then also, I picture on this shield, it has a little bit of a metal border in its wood inside, all right? So what I'm going to do to make that border is I'm going to inset along this whole drawing. And I'm just going to come along. Remember we were doing those parallel lines earlier? I'm going to do the same thing along the whole drawing with some parallel lines. And just inset. Even up here on this edge, inset. Right? Looking good. And then I want it to be wood inside. I'm going to make these wood slats at kind of an angle. So what I'm going to do is just do a light series of wood slats. I'm making them, they might be too light to even see. Now they're, they're visible a little bit. Something like that. And then I'm going to throw on top of here like a symbol. What could be a symbol of missile attraction? I'm picturing maybe like a... Uh, Circle, you got, I'm going to almost make this a little 3D feeling. Look at that, all of a sudden I have a cone. A triangle with a circle makes a cone. Again, I'm just doodling here like this. You're seeing some of the 3D doodle come out. Some feathers, right? But all basic shapes, triangles, squares, circles, something like that here. I'm going to do, so, a circle, a triangle, a cone with another circle, the shaft of the arrow, and then the feathers-ish, feathers-ish. It's magic. Yeah, how do we know it's magic? Look at those magic beams. Boop, 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 boop. That means magic. I'm going to come in with our graphic pen. And I'm just going to start outlining this. Trying to get nice, smooth, steady lines and not make them too sketchy. Went a little below there, so when I start this one, I'm going to have to come up a little bit. Connect these two. Looking good. Come in with this edge here. Now 
I'm going to, again, part of this overlapping magic. Remember we overlapped before? This overlapping, taking some of these overlapping shapes, drawing what seems important. If I don't go through there, it looks like it's overlapping. Overlapping. Overlapping a lot is about what you don't draw. I'm going to do kind of a couple lines in there. Almost as if it's a target. All right, that's pretty good. Last little part here, and then I'll let you guys go. Another micron. I'm going to come in. The light source is coming this way. Uh, great arrow, Louie. So what I'm going to do is uh, just add some shading underneath here to make it look like that rim of the metal is thick in a way. It kind of adds a little depth to it there. I'm even going to do that, as I picture this, is carved into the wood on the shield. So I'm just going to add some shade on this opposite side of where the light's coming in to make it look raised up just a little bit. It's all right. It's all right. And then the last little part here is this wood. I'm just going to go kind of make some wood shapes. So these ones are going to be a little, little more straightforward. Again, overlapping, they disappear behind there. And then what, I have a wood texture I like to do. It's just a very thin line, and then a little back and forth like that. Little curve, little angle. Little, that's a little knot in the wood right there. Just very light, kind of funky lines. Give it a little bit of wiggle in there, connect some. We're gonna kind of follow together. Oh, there's a little knot in the wood, happy accident. There you go, friends. That's a shield. Magic shield and missile attraction. Good. Thank you all. Let's review. Shield, depth, lines, wood texture overlapping objects. We built all that from simple objects. Beautiful. Loved it. We had some armor that started with a square with a little skirt added and built up that whole thing. Circles, dissecting, taking away from other objects, using objects on top of each other to see how they can pull apart each other and sculpt. We had some layers of treasure. I love saying layers or layers. I pronounce words wrong sometimes. That's who I am. Layers of treasure, gemstones with facets. And then we started with some of our practice drawings. Well, first of all, we had some chain mail going on. Arrows flying in. That's fitting with the uh, shield. I hope this guy has that shield. He's wearing the chain mail under the adamantine with the missile attraction shield. He's going into combat. In the beginning was a little bit of lines, which we used a lot of this. Straight lines, some curved lines, parallel lines. Beautiful. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. That was about an hour and 24 minutes. My guess is that's about how long these are going to be because I feel that was a good amount of time. We got to spend drawing. I really appreciate all of you being here. Uh, if you remember, tell a friend about it next time it's coming on. Again, I'm going to try to do Wednesdays at 3 o'clock consistently for the next little bit of time until my life changes and I'm back on the road again, and then we might have to change the schedule some. But I should be able to do this in the next couple of weeks. Magic to all of you. Keep drawing. Thank you, each and every one of you. Uh, I'm going to reload the people here in users chat. Uh, a10, Best Tone, uh, Commander Roots, a bot, De Winkler, Feet, Lurks, Hexelroy, Rabbit Hutch. You're all great people. Chris, thank you all so much. Tina, thank you all so much. I appreciate you.
And uh, wait, hold on. Let's go to this view. This is a fun view. Um, hey! I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Take care. See you next week, friends. Goodbye.